It hasn't been a secret that attendance at Disney World is down this summer, and even Disney themselves had predicted that the summer crowds were looking a little softer versus some historical averages. But some of the people are left asking, why? What, are, what is going on at Disney? Why are people not coming? Is it things that are beyond Disney World's control, or is it a lot of things that are in Disney World's control? Well, there's a lot of opinions and potential reasons for it, but I found a really interesting article here from Mickey Central that kind of points out some of the things here that could be affecting this. And I just want to walk through this and give some thoughts on it. So, hi, I'm Jared with Capture the Magic. And again, we have this article from Mickey Central. The headline is, Summer at Disney World in 2024. Where is everyone? So, summer at Disney World usually means one thing, crowds. Historically, the parks see a significant surge in visitors, especially during the 4th of July weekend, which having just been there over the 4th of July weekend, uh, we were there and the day we were at Magic Kingdom, there was not a ride over an hour long wait which is unheard of. And that was with Peter Pan being down for refurbishment. And there's multiple rides currently down that are being refurbed in the middle of summer, which again is not something that you normally see. Families, teens, and Disney enthusiasts alike flock and eager to soak up the magic and enjoy the warm weather. But 2024 has been an anomaly. The typically bustling park is experiencing unusually low crowd levels, leaving many to wonder what's going on at Disney World this summer. And this is the average... Uh, monthly average wait time from Thrill Data they show here. Uh, it's kind of hard to read that, but that's just kind of a graph they put up there. So what's behind the decline in attendance? It says increased costs. One of the most significant factors contributing to the lower attendance is the increased cost of visiting Disney World. Rising ticket prices, expensive dining options, and pricey souvenirs are making it harder for families to justify the trip. Price gouging or the perception of it is another issue. From food to merchandise, many visitors feel like they are being overcharged, contributing to a growing sense of dissatisfaction. Many fans who once considered Disney World an annual pilgrimage are now looking for more affordable vacation options. Uh, that one is obviously, I think, one of the most obvious things. Completely agree with that. Uh, it, uh, we did a previous video talking about another article where the cost of the Disney World food is double inflation. And it's just... It, it, you're being, you know, there's a lot of things that you used to get as part of your Disney World vacation that made it feel like a better value. I'm not saying Disney World was ever cheap. It used to be cheaper, but it never was considered like, oh man, it's dirt cheap to go to Disney. But well, what you were paying, you got so much in return or or so it seemed even less than a decade ago. And they go on talking about uh, removal of Fast Pass, Magical Express. Those are things that made your trip feel worth it. When you came into the airport, if you flew into MCO, you, it's almost like your trip started immediately. You went downstairs into the area and you were, you were greeted by the bus and, and Disney employees, uh, cast members, to take you to your hotel. That was a great way to start your trip. And they would take you back to the airport. Uh, Fast Pass, I think, is a big deal. It was a simple system. It was included. It made you feel like your trip started before you even left. And you could use it the entire time. And people got to cut the line and got to ride, you know, they got guaranteed attractions that they wanted to ride on their trip instead of just every day being like, we'll see what happens. I agree. Cost and those things combined into it are a major factor, I do believe. And they go on to talk about removal of Fast Pass, which now it has turned into Genie Plus, and now it's going to change into Lightning Lane. It's just, it's been a mess ever since they started charging for this. And I think the frustration and disappointment, is, and they mentioned here from longtime fans, is continuing just to build up and boil. Uh, removal of Disney's Magical Express that we talked about. I think that's a huge thing. I, I think that is, if they brought that back, that would be one thing they could bring back that I think would make a lot of the Disney, uh, the longtime Disney fans very happy. So the Imagineering projects with cost-cutting measures. Recent Imagineering projects have also come under scrutiny. Many fans feel that the new attractions and refurbishments have cut corners, prioritizing budget over experience. The sentiment has dampened enthusiasm, leading some to opt out of their usual summer visit. I think that's um, very true and evident. I mean, look at Epcot. I mean, the things, and we have another video talking about Epcot, all the things that were going to be included in Epcot. You had the the Gardens Pavilion. You were going to have the retheme of Space Mountain. You were going to have the Mary Poppins attraction. You were going to have the Play Pavilion. None of those things happened. Uh, what we ended up with was the Communicore Hall, which is the a food court. Not even a food court. It's just a, it's a cafeteria. And it just doesn't, it's not, it doesn't scream Disney. It's not, it seems again that it was designed in California, ported over to Florida and they said, just do it because it's cheap. So I, I do agree with that. And they mentioned another one, the Splash Mountain retheme. Uh, says the retheming of Splash Mountain has stirred mixed emotions. While some applaud the move towards inclusivity, others are nostalgic for the original and feel alienated by the change. 
the split sentiment may be influencing attendance numbers as well. I don't know on that one. It could. Now, I've, I've said all along, I had never, you know, I'm not a giant <laughs> Princess and the Frog fan. I didn't have a, a giant nostalgia for Splash Mountain. Having ridden, well, kind of ridden both, I had to be evacuated off of Tiana during our AP previews. Um, from what I've seen, I still prefer Splash Mountain. I feel like it had more things going on. But I think that the it's not just the Splash Mountain retheme. I think it's the unreliability of that ride. Now, it has been better in the last week from what we've seen. But during AP previews and the opening, it was not reliable. So it could be some of that. And it just seems, again, it's like a re, whether or not you like the ride or not, it's a retheme. And I think people are, I think the Disney audience is getting tired of just rethemes and just taking a ride, retheming to something else. I mean, like, here you go. I think people want to see new things, especially with, you know, you've got your competition building an entire new theme park. Uh, I, I think that leaves people wanting more than just a rethemed attraction. And, and even if you're a princess in the Prague, and even if you're a princess and the frog fan, you know, I think you should want more than just a rethemed attraction uh, that's repurposed, like something fresh and new and innovative, to be honest. They also bring up saving money for Epic Universe. Another factor could be the excitement surrounding the upcoming 2025 opening of Epic Universe. Some theme park enthusiasts might be saving the vacation funds to experience this new attraction, thereby skipping Disney World this year. I've had a, a little dark horse theory that that could be a major part of this. Now, it's nothing I can prove now, and it may be something that maybe gets proved in a year or two. But I think there's a lot of people that are looking at Epic Universe and saying, like for sure, their Orlando, their Universal Orlando trips, saying let's just wait until Epic Universe opens. Why go now when we can go maybe in less than a year to check it out? And I think there's a lot of people that are just general theme park goers that always just by default would go to Disney World. They're just going, well, let's check out this new Epic Universe and just waiting. I think that could be a pretty big factor. Again, it's not something we're going to know until next summer and we see how that attendance is. But I think that could be a bigger factor than many people realize. Uh, they say Florida's oppressive heat and humidity. Florida's summer heat and humidity are notorious, but they've never been enough to keep the crowds away in the past. However, with the other contributing factors, the intense weather might be the final straw for some visitors. Uh, as someone who lives in Florida, it's oppressively hot in the summer. I mean, it's it's a humidity. It's heat, but if you look historically, it's been about the same for the past 50 years. That hasn't changed. Now, that could be when you, like they said here, you add everything else up into this and then you throw the heat on top of it. Do you want to mess with the heat when you're not getting the better experience that you're used to getting? That's a legitimate that's a legitimate thing. That could be a case. Um, I'm not going to say that like the heat and humidity are always there. It's like a warm blanket you didn't ask for and you're just sweating all the time. But I suppose if you're getting nickel and dimed all over the place, you're less likely to want to put up with that versus if you're getting a lot of things and included. And let's be honest, the Disney parks used to be open much later at night because of the heat. It used to be open until one in the morning. So the fact that the parks don't open as late when it's not as hot outside, that could be a factor. It's not that the heat has changed. It's just everything surrounding it and your ability to escape that heat perhaps has changed. They also said no festivals at Epcot. A lack of summer festivals at Epcot is puzzling. These events usually draw significant crowds, but this year Epcot's calendar is surprisingly sparse. This absence is notable and likely contributing to the overall dip in attendance. It's very possible. I mean, I don't, I've said for a while they should do some sort of summer festival at Epcot, but having no festival at Epcot and having test track down and having this lackluster opening of whatever this, this new, Epcot is. Uh, I think that's probably part of it as well. They also talk about lack of new rides, reduced 4th of July decorations, and those things. I don't know if that's a major uh, you know, contributor, but again, all of these little things add up into a big thing. So we're talking a lot of things that may be little things on its face, but all these things do add up, and especially when you have increased competition, you have Epic Universe just right around the corner uh, waiting for you. And they say insights from regular visitors. Regular visitors have shared their experiences on social media, showcasing unusually empty walkways and pavilion concourses, such as the new Communicore Hall. These insights paint a picture of a different Disney World experience this summer, one that is less crowded and more relaxed. But you also have, you know, this uh, Brer Oswald here on Twitter showing slow holiday weekend. It's 75 minutes after the 1 p.m. drop and everything is available, which is Tron Light Cycle and Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Uh, that's usually pretty rare. Usually these things get ate up immediately and you're talking over almost an hour and a half after the one o'clock drop and there's still virtual queues available. That tells you that there's not a lot of people in the parks and there, and because of that, not a lot of demand for these virtual queues. And they show some pictures here of, you know, some of the lower crowds going to predictions for the future. Um, 
you know, the big question is, what does this mean for the future of Disney World and its attendance? In the short term, if the trend continues, Disney may need to reevaluate its pricing strategies and perks to lure back visitors. I think no matter what, they need to do that. I don't think that's a short term. In the long term impact, persistent low, low crowd levels could affect the company's revenue and lead to changes in how Disney approaches its theme park operations and guest experiences. I think both of those are some of the very least things they could do and should do. And then they just, you know, kind of have a conclusion here. But I will say one thing they didn't put on here is I do think the economy is a factor in this. I think that that with inflation and everything else going on, it is undoubtedly a factor in this. But I also think, again, it's a lot of little things. It's not one thing only. If you're looking at what is the, what is the thing to, to just point a finger at and say, what's the issue with Disney? It's not just a single thing. Now, there are things that are bigger issues than others, but it's a lot of little things that Disney used to do great. And Disney was a company... And I've said for a long time, they set the standard in which to be judged by, and they have been falling short of the standard they set. And they seem to be a little agitated when people point out that they used to do certain things. And, you know, the people that notice this the most are people who have been going to the parks because you were up, you know, you got used to a certain level of creativity and, and access and perks. And then as those things degrade, new people that come in don't have any reference point for it. And that while Disney still has things that are enjoyable, it's not what it used to be on a lot of different levels. So the newer people don't really quite understand it. But the people have been going for a long time. They see it and they get it. And I definitely think Disney needs to get back to working on the details, get away from this spreadsheet management of everything has to be charts and nickel and dimed and all these things and just get back to what they used to do. I think if they simply brought back Fast Pass Plus and they brought back Magical Express and didn't change anything else, I think there would be a lot of people that would be happy with that change. Now, I'm not saying they don't need to do anything else, but I think that would go a long ways with the Disney audience to make them feel like I'm still, I'm I'm getting a lot out of my trip. This is expensive, but hey, we get these perks. We get Fast Pass Plus. We, I get to go to and from the airport. It's all taken care of. But will they do that? I don't see current management doing it. But again, if the competition from Universal Studios and Epic Universe continues to really impact them, we could see them make some drastic changes that they otherwise would not. But that's gonna do it for this video. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe to the channel as we do lots of Epic Universe, Universal Studios, Disney World, and pop culture news around here. And let us know in the comments, do you agree with this article? Do you agree with anything I said? Or do you completely disagree? Either way, let us know. And until next time, we will see you in the parks.